Hey everyone, this is Kevin Kitwana. Couple of days ago, I posted photos on my Twitter that I got the uh, recent uh, Disney Store 12 inch classic doll of the Beast, and I got a lot of feedback. And so I decided to uh, feature this doll uh, on today's episode of Kitwana's Toys. So you can uh, have an even closer look at this um, fantastic figure. Um, I said this is the current version of the uh, Beast doll that the Disney Store has, but it actually is almost uh, two years old. Um, you know, usually they change up the packaging of their uh, dolls every year, but for some reason the Beast is still being sold as we speak in December 2020. Uh, in the uh, 2019 version of the packaging, so you can uh, see by the uh, uh, design of the uh, writing, uh, that's what they usually change every year, and the box design as well. As you may remember, the previous version before that, the previous version of the Beast doll featured him in his uh, classic uh, blue and golden ballroom outfit. However, this doll is no longer available, so for this episode we are only going to look at the current version which you can still order at the uh, uh, Shop Disney and uh, you can still buy at the Disney Store. I'm going to put you the link to purchase uh, in the description of this video below, as always. So let's take a look at the box. We see the current Disney logo uh, here on the top left. No longer says Disney Store or Shop Disney, it's just the Disney Castle logo. Uh, nice uh, window display box with the beast neatly packaged in a nice pose. And you can see the Disney Princess logo and it says the Beast on the front. We've got Belle and the Beast artwork here on this side. And uh, one more artwork of Belle in her yellow ball gown uh, reading a book and the Disney logo. On the other side we've got even more Belle artwork and there's her autograph as well. Same with you uh, will get in the parks when you meet her. That's a nice touch by Disney. Um, but of course what I uh, love the most is the artwork on the back. You can see Beast in his um, blue and golden uh, ballroom outfit holding a ton of books. And I can never get enough of official and the unofficial beast artwork of course as a fairy this is um, Beauty and the Beast is my favorite uh, Disney princess story no big surprise here um, the retail value is $16.99 but usually we, you can uh, get these dolls uh, discounted currently uh, there's a promotion going on that uh, will get you uh, the dolls for uh, $12 a piece and sometimes you can even get them for as low as ten dollars on Shop Disney. Um, as I already uh, said in a previous episode about a Disney store doll, um, these dolls are all made uh, by a company named, named Sun Wing Ming Industrial in Dongguan, China. Uh, the Disney store does not own any toy factories. In fact, they contract everything out. And all the Disney store dolls are made at the same place since many, many years. And I'd say they are still the best quality Disney dolls out there. So we're going to unbox some um, little doll right now. So you can see, you can get an even closer look.
All right, and here we have the beast in all of its glory, standing uh, just exactly uh, 12 inches tall, so it is a little bit um, taller than uh, the uh, princess dolls, so uh, with, uh, it's very accurate if you uh, place it next to uh, the 12 inch classic bell doll, which is actually a little bit uh, shorter than 12 inches of the beast, which uh, tower very nicely over her. Um, as you were able to see before I knocked it down, it is able to stand on its own, despite the legs being curved um, very movie accurately with all these joints. Um, the beast, as you can see, is of course not a single species of animal, rather it has the head of a buffalo and the jaws, mane and teeth of a lion, the arms and the body of a bear and the legs and the tail of a wolf. That's the official description from, uh, from the Disney animators that worked on uh, the 1991 classic Beauty and the Beast and I think this beast doll looks very movie accurate. It is in its winter costume, as you can see. Um, but let's start at the head. You can see the uh, buffalo-like horns, which are black, and the uh, rest of its face is a uh, beautiful chocolate brown. I really like this combination of the brown and and black. Um, unfortunately, the eyes, the color of the eyes isn't accurate. Uh, as you know, in the animated classic, the beast has blue eyes. Here it is uh, rather solid black. A uh, small detail that I noticed. Uh, but overall, the face is very accurate, very, very beautiful. Uh, very accurately molded. I like the two teeth sticking out and the nose, it's, it's really, really, really nice, lots of detail. Uh, they put a lot of effort into molding the fur. However, what looks weird is that they molded the cravat onto his head. And it's kind of a uh, soft plastic rubbery style head. And that definitely looks weird. They should have uh, incorporated the cravat uh, actually uh, onto his um, outfit rather than the head so it, it just looks weird and you, especially when you turn the head around it can do a full 360 actually um, it is articulated at the neck then at the shoulders the, and the elbows uh, the hips and both of the knees, of course. Uh, when we go further down, you can see um, that his, uh, his uh, white third underneath, and then that third is connected to the pants in actually in one piece. So the pants aren't separate from the upper part of the outfit. Um, we've got movie accurate colors here as well. And take a look at these beautifully molded hands. And they even painted the black claws. And you can see it's rather, it's a very nice mixture of a humanoid and uh, animal like uh, claws. That's really nice. Beautifully molded. And what they actually did is they uh, molded. Um, separate pieces for the lower arms and the and the for the lower arms which include the hands and then as as well for the uh, lower tiles ties and the legs but the rest of the body is actually a standard african-american male body that they use for um uh, prince naveen for example uh, this is pretty interesting you would be able to see that if you were to remove the clothes, which you basically can do since uh, the clothes are secured, are um, removable by a Velcro 
on the back. But it's pretty difficult to um, uh, get the fur um, over the hands. You really have to take care it doesn't rip. So I recommend that you not do this. But what you actually can remove without too much of an effort is the beast's cape. It simply is um, being held together by, by a Velcro uh, at his neck. You can simply uh, remove that and then you've got this beautiful cape, blue and red cape, which is actually stuffed. And then you have the beast doll looking like this that allows you a closer look at how the doll is constructed. You can see um, as this is no longer a transforming doll, unfortunately, it no longer transforms into a Prince Adam. You can see they put the head on a rather big piece of plastic that was that simply sits on on his neck so this doesn't this doesn't look uh, very good but um, uh, fortunately uh, just uh, you can uh, hide that by putting the cape back on and then it's, uh, it's no longer uh, visible and not not too bad looking but of course this looks like a, that looks like a pretty skinny body since they well actually used a standard male body as I already said. You can see an earlier version of the beast doll, of the classic beast doll behind me here. Uh, that was um, about, uh, it was pre-2015 when the Disney store um, changed heads on all of their male dolls. They, they suddenly stopped manufacturing a transforming doll that has Prince Adam's head, which is too bad because uh, I think Prince Adam is uh, has the most handsome face of all the Disney Store Prince dolls, and so it's too bad that they didn't update his face and instead chose to go with a Beast doll only that's no longer transformable into Prince Adam. So keep that in mind. Um, Let's remain on the front of this doll for just a few more moments. Um, we go further down and you can see the knees are very nicely. It's a great legs as we would say in the uh, furry community. But look down here. This is what's the most disturbing on this doll. Look at the feet, feet paws and claws especially. Why is there only three claws per, per feet? This is not accurate. And let me show you that. We've got official Disney artwork of the beast in an official storybook. You can clearly see it is four claws per foot. Same on the cover. And actually, uh, Disney get, got that right uh, at the $700 Platinum Bell and Beast doll set where the Beast has the accurate number of claws, but not here, not on this doll. I mean, the hands are fine, but the, the feet are definitely not. There's only three, three claws per foot. Why? Why, Disney? An otherwise perfect doll. Um, the arms swing out, the shoulder, or shoulders are articulated and as said um, there's articulation in the elbows as well so this gives you uh, some great possibility. Let's take a look. Uh, so the doll from the side and it looks really nice. Now we take a look at the back and of course the most dominant thing is his cape which is nicely stuffed. Finally they stuffed the cape again 
uh, to give the beast its characteristic back. They, they did away with that a couple of years ago when they tried to uh, simplify the dolls, but it's very nice to see this is back. Uh, beautiful deep blue color um, as seen in the movie and it feels very nice and it's got a the inside of it is red beautiful red and you can also see when you lift the cape up you can see the uh, velcro of the fur and the tail is attached to his pants uh, tail the hair feels rather fuzzy uh, but uh, I can brush this out a little bit and it seems to have a little bit uh, like a cardboard, st cardboard structure in it so it would um, always uh, stay in a nice shape and take a look at these wonderfully beautifully detailed molded legs this is really nice at least the lower ties they did the uh, custom for the beast the upper ties are standard human upper ties as is the body underneath his shirt i love that you can see the fur uh, actually on the legs this is really nice so as I said I do not recommend that you change the beast's clothes very often as they, the seams would easily pop if you uh, when you are trying to get it across the huge feet and hands so the beast is beautiful as it is. As for the legs, you can also post them in a totally uh, unnatural position by moving them all the way forward and then the beast could sit. <laughs> it's pretty pretty funny. <laughs> but of course we wanna have the beast standing tall and proud. And as I said, it is, as you have seen in, in the beginning of the video, it is able to stand on its own. So, this is the current Disney Store 12 inch classic doll from the Beast. It is still available. If you want to get it for Christmas, for the holidays, be sure to order it right now. I'll give you the link in the video, in the video description. And with that being said, that was already it for this episode um, in a future episode uh, someday we're going to look at all of my um, Disney Store Beast dolls that I collected over the years actually uh, Bell and Beast dolls so uh, stay tuned and we will eventually uh, look at them all for now the Beast and I say bye